Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Nur Almas Reza Bitiani Haziz and I am the current Vice President of Talks of the Youth Science Forum. I'm from the class L61. And as you can see from the slide, um, today's topic will be on nanotechnology. When someone says about nanotechnology, um, some people may think about this. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this scene in the latest Avengers Endgame, where Iron Man has his suit somewhere in his art reactor. Sorry. Okay, um, yeah, so the suit came nowhere except from his art reactor. So where did that suit come from? It's a metal-like structure that wraps around his body snugly and then, you know, where did that thing come from? It's very, very small. It should be small to fit in this art chapter. So what is actually nanotechnology? It is a branch of technology that deals with dimensions and tolerances of less than 100 nanometers, especially the manipulation of individual atoms and molecules. To put it simply, it's the study and application of extremely small things. To put it in perspective, um, one nanometer is about a hundred thousand times smaller than the diameter of one strand of your hair. Nanotechnology is actually not a new branch of science, it's a, a branch of science that kind of applies to all the sciences, chemistry, biology, physics, material science, and engineering. So, if these things are so small, how do you see or work with them? So the first thing that comes into your minds are microscopes because microscopes are the ones that usually are associated with very small things. So nanoparticles, they cannot be seen using normal light microscopes, the ones that we have in this school and other normal high schools. It can be seen using electron microscopes. However, to actually work on a nanoparticle, you have to use a scanning tunneling microscope, which is this one in real life. This is the real scanning tunneling microscope. It's very, very huge. And then like a person could stand here and then that thing would be the size of the person. So how does this scanning tunneling microscope work? It, so basically you have like, You have this scanner, it, it looks like a pen. Um, that scanner, it has a very thin metal wire at the end. It's called the tungsten tip. And then you, you connect the scanner and the material on a, with a power supply. So both of them are connected and then it's like a circuit. And then the scanner is also connected with a feedback loop. How you use this is actually the scanner you have a gap between the material and the scanner, but a very, very tiny gap. So there would be air in the middle. This microscope uses the principle of quantum, a mechanical quantum principle called the tunneling effect. In this case, the electrons do not behave like a particle. The electrons will behave like a wave. So the electrons from either the scanner or the material, because of the power supply, it, will, it can go through the barrier, in this case, the air, the gap, the small tiny gap of air in there, it can pass through the barrier and then it does a complete circuit of the of the thing, yeah. So the feedback loop will detect the signals of whatever current you have and then it will plot a graph or something that you can see. There's two ways how this works. Um, the first one the first way is the scanner would be at the same height all over the material. It would scan like like that on the material and then it can it detects the 
current, the, the changes in current because of the different patterns of the atoms in the material on the surface, obviously. And then the second way is the scanner follows the pattern of the material by maintaining and ensuring that the current that they receive is equal all the way through the material. So from this picture, it's the second way because as you can see, the scanner moves with the atom's pattern. So that pattern moving, the positioning of the scanner will be detected by the feedback loop and then it will plot the graph for you. So where does nanotechnology originate from? It's actually from a talk entitled There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. It's, from a, it's by a physicist who is named Richard Feynman. It was an American Physical Society meeting at the California Institute of Technology, the Caltech. It was actually discovered in December 29, 1959. So nanotechnology has been around for so long However, nowadays with the modern technology that we have, it eases the advancements of nanotechnology more and more every single day. So there's a lot of nanomaterials in this world, and the main ones currently is, as you can see from the picture, it's a material that is only one atom thick. It's graphene. Graphene is a wonderful material. It's a, a game-changing material. It's only a single thin layer of graphite. You know graphite, right? The ones that you use for your pencils, the lead. And it's the first material, the first two-dimensional material discovered. It is very, very strong, despite it being only one atom thick. It is 300 times stronger than steel. And then some studies say that it's almost twice the strength of Kevlar. You know, the material that they use for bulletproof vests and armor. And then graphene is also flexible and it's transparent and it's highly conductive, even better than copper. It is seemingly impermeable to most gases and liquids. So from the characteristics, you see that changing the arrangement of atoms greatly changes the characteristics of a substance because graphite is black and then it's it's not that strong. It's strong, but it's very brittle. But this one is very, very strong. And it's, yeah, it's stronger than steel. Can you imagine that? So graphene has a lot of uses. Before that, um, the picture. That one is how they do, how they print graphene is they put it on a film because it's, it's thin. So they're afraid it might break because of the bonds. So graphene, um, one of the uses of graphene is in water filtration because it was impermeable to water as I said earlier. So the substance that they use is graphene oxide which is put into a solution containing, this was an experiment, containing a bacteria called E. coli. So the water is actually saline stimulated water and it's actually also a nutrient medium which simulates body medium because you know so so the bacteria can grow and then the result after they combine the graphene oxide with the solution containing the bacteria and the infer and impurities the graphene oxide along with the living and the destroyed bacteria form flakes inside the solutions the resulting mass the flakes the combined flakes they can be easily extracted making water almost completely free of bacteria. The extracted mass, the clump, you can treat it with ultrasound and you can get back your graphene. So it's very cost effective and then you can reuse it. So that's the picture of the, what, of the solution. So the first one is the solution containing the bacteria and stuff with, before you add the graphene oxide. And then the second one, is a clear, you can see it's clear, it's after you add the graphene oxide. And the third cube is the resulting, you can see the resulting mass where the graphene oxide clumps the bacteria and the impurities together. And then another nano, nanoparticle is quantum dots. It's a semiconductor nanoparticle. It glows a particular color after being illuminated by light. 
The color depends on the size of the particles and the type of materials that they use. So here's a, some, a picture of the quantum dots with different colors. So, as I said, nanotechnology is advancing more and more. Of course, people are improving it because they have a lot of uses. So, the first use is medicine, and then you have electronics, it's used in electronics, fabric, food, and sporting goods. There's actually many more, but this is all I'm listing out, generally. So, the uses in medicine. I'm going to talk about, focus on drug delivery in terms of medicine. Specifically, cancer heat therapy. Uh, the nanotubes, there are nano, the nanotubes, they are linked to antibodies, which recognize tumor cells. So, the nanotubes that you insert in a person's body, they will accumulate at the tumor cells. And then when you apply infrared light, the nanotubes will absorb the infrared and then turning it into heat. So the nanotubes originally they contain the chemotherapy drug. So when you heat when the light changes into heat, the drug is released and of course it will attack the tumor cells. And then the heat also destroy help destroy the cancer cells because it's focused at one spot. This thing is very useful because the chemotherapy that we use um, now it destroys both your healthy cells and the cancer cells. But this one, it focuses, it focuses on only the tumor cells because the, nano, the nanotubes are attracted to the tumor cells. And then the uses in electronics. There is a silver nanoparticle ink being created. And as you know, in circuit boards, in electronics, you need conductive lines. And then with the silver nanoparticle ink, you can rapidly and cheaply make electrical circuits just by printing, using your printer. So the best, the scientists that discovered this, the, the best material that they could print on was the resin coated paper, the PET column, and glossy photo paper. The circuits then, the, the ones that you print, you can attach to electronic components using conductive double-sided tape. So this is, as you can see, it's just using tape and a printer. It's very easy, especially if you want to do a simple experiment for yourself, maybe at home. So all you need is just the ink and, the, of course, the paper. So that's a photo of the silver nanoparticle ink printed on a small film. The usage in food. From the picture, it's a, you know that thing is a supplement, right? That one is encapsulated. It's fish oil encapsulated in gelatin. But with nanotechnology, you can nano encapsulate your vitamins. It helps mask the taste and odor of tuna fish oil, specifically, specifically tuna fish oil, because it smells bad. And um, the fish oil particles are packed into a film coating, and then this prevents the fish oil from reacting with oxygen. So you won't have any smell coming from your vitamins and stuff. And then the best thing is they break open only when in your stomach. So you won't taste anything, you're just eating it, and then you get the nutrients. So that's a plus. Um, the challenges in nanotechnology, however, they may be a cure for diseases, but they may also be toxins. So as I said earlier, it can be used for drug delivery, but sometimes the things that you insert in your body should not be inserted at all because Nanoparticles, they're very, very small, so there's a possibility that they may cross the barrier between your brain and the bloodstream, which helps filter the toxins away, and then they may cause some diseases, especially to your brains. So, and then another, another thing is the social concerns. Since nanotechnology is very advanced, and it may allow us to create powerful weapons like the Iron Man suit, that's a possibility. And then the ethnic, et, the ethical concerns is that there's a possibility of enhancing self using medical nanotechnology. So basically, you're making yourself a superhuman. And this actually, <laughs> this actually kind of divides people into two, into two races because you know nanotechnology is expensive, especially when it involves something as complicated as changing the human body. So 
this will divide the humans into the rich and the superhumans, and then the poor and the normal humans. So who are who cannot afford to enhance themselves? So yeah, that's all for me. Um,